Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I want to go over this article that many of you have been asking me about, which is that the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro will show a warning if a non-genuine Apple display is used for repairs. And it says over here it's going to give a message very similar to the battery case where it says, unable to verify this iPhone has a genuine Apple display, learn more, and it calls it an important display message. Now, with the battery issue, I was pretty clear-cut in my condemnation of it for one reason. Before I get to that, let me just say up front that there are many bad parts vendors in this industry. There are many people that sell garbage, and I have absolutely no problem with the customer knowing via a software tool if what's in their phone is a good part. I think it's a good feature. I'm okay with it. I think it's fine. The problem I had when it came to the battery issue is that with the battery issue, I could replace the battery in an iPhone XS. I could buy an iPhone XS from Apple. I could open it before I've ever even turned the phone on, take that battery out, put it in the other iPhone XS, and it will give me this error. The, reason, the issue that I had there is that even if you put a good part into the phone, it's still going to give you this error, even if it's a part that came with app, from Apple, just because you weren't able to run the little fancy schmancy Apple software tool on it that many of us don't have access to. And I thought that was something that was dumb. It's not even dumb, it's just kind of mean and not useful to the end user. And I thought that it's actually going to encourage people to ignore it because if this message shows up, even when you put an original, new, unused battery into the phone, people are going to learn that this message means nothing and then you're going to have a generation of iPhone users that are, you know, putting, um, like my ex-girlfriend, putting the piece of tape over the check engine light in the car. And that's not a good thing. You need to check your check engine light, says the guy with a motor that's making a bunch of angry noises as he drives his e-bike home. But anyway, topic for another video. Now, the, I'm actually a little on the fence as to how I feel about this screen repair thing. So on one hand, my question is, Will this happen even if I take the screen off of another iPhone 11 and put it into my iPhone 11? If I buy an iPhone 11 from Apple and I take the screen off of it and then I put it into my cracked iPhone 11, is it going to say unable to verify that it has a genuine Apple display? Is it going, or is it going to actually check inside the screen and say, I accept that even though this screen serial number is different than the one it came with, this is an original Apple screen? Aside from that, I'm honestly giving Apple a little bit more leniency here, even if this does not... To, even if this, this does not detect the screen and just detect serial numbers. And here's why. With batteries, you can refurbish a battery. It's just something that m far fewer people are actually doing. When it comes to refurbishing a screen, many people refurbish screens on a regular basis. So there are lots of people that will take the screen and they will, you know, remove the broken glass layer and put a new glass layer on. So with the battery, you know, I could... I was irritated at them saying, well, if I haven't run this little tool, even if you put an original battery in, I'm going to still say that there's a problem with it. Because people were not en masse refurbishing batteries that have a cost of like, you know, two to five bucks. Like just people were not, it's technically doable, but it was not large scale enough to be some sort of serious issue where even if you could read the firmware and everything of it, they, there may be somebody that put a, you know, a new cell inside there and used the original controller. With iPhone batteries, it just wasn't something that was as widespread as with, in, with uh, screen refurbishing. But when it comes to screen refurbishing, this is widespread. There's an entire industry of this. There are people that show up at CTIA to sell normal, basic, mom-and-pop screen repair shops and places that just sell prepaid, simple mobile kind of service, all the stuff that they need to refurbish the screen. And there are varying degrees of quality. There are people that refurbish screens to the point where it looks like it came straight out of the Apple Store. And there are people that refurbish screens to the point where the phone itself will think that it had the same screen in there it originally did. But it, it, just, it looks like just somebody just, for lack of a better word, just took a shit on the digitizer and then put a piece of glass over it. They look awful. So with screen refurbishing, even if you were able to read the actual information inside the digitizer, if you were able to have a handshake communication with the LCD, you would still not be able to tell that somebody uh, replaced the glass in it. So there's no way for this to really digitally tell if that's a refurbished screen or not. So I would be a little bit more understanding if Apple went to the effort to say, you know what, if you change the screen outside of an Apple store, it's too difficult to tell. I have no way of telling if this is a refurbished original or an actual new screen, nor is there a way for this little app to tell if it's a good refurb or a bad refurb, so screw it, I'm putting up this message. I'm a little bit more open to this message being present with displays than I am with batteries because more people are refurbishing displays and mass than people refurbishing batteries. However, I'm just before you get to it, that's also an excellent argument as to why this should not exist. Because I could, technically, I could take the screen out of your phone, 
I could do a glass-only screen refurbishment with all the tools that I have in front of me. I could actually do a crap job. I could pour a little bit of my protein shake on that screen, close it up, and your phone may never know the difference because it's still going to have the same serial number as the original. Now, this is still not going to be the type of thing that's going to affect most iPhone screen repair places, because screen refurbishing is not the type of thing you do in front of the customer. This is an absolute, you, you can watch YouTube videos on it, the entire process to do it properly to a, you know, a, a standard where it's going to look the same as what came out of the Apple Store. You need special machinery for this, specialized tools. It's not something you're going to do in front of the customer while you're, you know, dealing with other customers and stuff like that. This is the kind of thing that typically happens in, you know, in, in warehouses that are not customer facing or in some factory in China. So if you are tec technically the way to get around this, if you are simply a repair shop that did glass only repairs in your own facility and you were actually doing the glass only repairs while the customer waited for a half hour to an hour, you could actually probably do that glass only repair in front of the customer and this app would not be able to tell that you did the job. Even if you did a terrible, awful, garbage job, it would never be able to tell. The only people that this app is going to affect is, play, let's say you go into a place like Mobile Centrix to buy your screens and you decide to buy the refurbished OEM. Even if it is an OEM LCD with an OEM digitizer that somebody, if somebody else changed the glass on it, when you buy that screen and put it in the phone, it's going to go, uh-uh-uh, the serial number over here looks a little bit different. So I'm going to say that this is unable to verify it as a genuine Apple display. At the end of the day, when it, when it comes to the batteries, I thought that was kind of fear-mongering. But honestly, what I think is going to really help here is that Apple Genuine Parts Repair Program. So let's say I tell a customer you're going to see this message. Now I'm going to post the pricing that I found in the description down below for that Apple Genuine Parts program that they have where you can get access to genuine parts. If you want to screen to an iPhone 6S, they were charging something like $117. And now, I, as I said in the video about the Genuine Parts program, if, you have, uh, if, you, if you're selling an OLED display or some sort of ridiculously high-resolution display and you have those the beautiful black levels that you would expect from an OLED, maybe then I can understand that you're billing $117 part by itself. It's understandable with the super high-end screens. We're talking about an iPhone 6S screen here. There's nothing that special in there that makes it $117. So I think the best way, you know, the way I would sell my customers on a message like this is I would say, I completely understand that you're concerned about not getting a genuine display. Would you like to buy a $117 screen for your $120 phone? It's like Because the thing is, when you actually put the decisions in front of the customer, at those prices, even the stingiest of customers is going to realize, you know what, I'll just stick with the refurbished one. Because the refurbished original, in many cases, is fine. I completely understand and respect if someone does not want a refurbished original in their phone. By all means, I understand and respect it. But when you're looking at the prices, when you have a refurbished original, a quality refurbished original, not the garbage ones, because there is a difference. You have quality refurbished originals, garbage refurbished or originals. Quality aftermarket, garbage aftermarket. When you get a quality refurbished original in that phone, and that screen costs you 27 to $33, and then you put the original next to it at 117 and you can't see the difference in that thing under a damn microscope, 99.9% .9 of your customers are going to choose the $33 screen because it, it, it just makes sense. The people that actually have the money to spend $117 or the, the people that have the, the money to spend an additional $70 to $80 extra on a four-year-old phone for something that they cannot tell the, the difference in, they're people that buy new phones anyway, so you're probably not going to see them in your repair shop. So this is not something that I think is the biggest deal. Again, it just, just when you're speaking to your customers, say, okay, I can become a member of the Apple Genuine Parts program so that you never get this message in your phone, but here's how much the screen replacement is going to cost. You still want to go ahead with it. The people who have the money to do that are typically not people who are walking in saying, I want to fix a four-year-old phone. The demographic of people who say, I have a four to th three to four-year-old phone, I would like to fix it, are not people that are going to spend an additional 70 to to $100 on differences that you cannot point out in a microscope, much less when you're looking at it. So this is not, I, I don't think this is really as bad as people are saying. Again, when it comes to the battery program, I thought that was BS because you do not have people in repair shops across the country running around, uh, you know, rewrapping old new cells into old housings and stuff like that. So I understand where they're where they're coming from when they. S I don't understand where they're coming from. I, think. I don't understand when they're coming from when they say, we need to just read it at the serial number level because there's no way software could ever determine what's going on with the battery. It that's not something that happens. Whereas with screens, 
Repair shops across the country and mass are spending money on refurbishing, uh, refurbishing equipment so that they could resell refurbished screens, which the software will never be able to tell the difference in. But again, as I said in the beginning, if you are actually doing glass-only repairs on the screen, that is literally the biggest argument against this software because I can get around it by doing glass-only in-house. The screen serial number stays the same. I could do a garbage job. I could pour my protein shake on it, and it would never tell the difference in the screens. So that's it. I think I've just repeated myself twice. I probably could have cut this video off in five minutes, but if you've, if you've been here for seven years, you know what to expect from this channel by now. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think of this program in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your input, your ideas, your thoughts. If you're any of the individuals that know more than me about this, uh, you know, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you.